Hi, welcome back. On this episode, I'm going to show you the sheet metal brake that I made that can bend up to uh, 6 foot 11 sheets of metal and also takes up zero uh, floor space when you're not using it. So don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button and check me out on Instagram and Car Garage. Let's get started. Alright, so this is the uh, sheet metal brake that I made. Its total length is uh, 8 feet long and uh, between my uh, bolts is about 6 foot 11. If you did need to bend something that was about 7 feet long, the, you could pull the bolts out and uh, just use C-clamps or something to get your bend. My uh, bolts, I used uh, half inch uh, bolts. I have one nut on the bottom so I want to be able to access it easier. And then I have another nut on the top. And then when I bought the uh, hardware, they were all out of uh, half inch uh, fender washers. But I'll probably end up throwing some fender washers on next time I'm at one of the suppliers and as long as they have some. So it's a pretty basic concept. I bought this metal a few years ago to uh, build one. I just finally got around to it. So for the most part, it's just three pieces. You can see it pretty good from here. So we have our piece that flips up, our stationary piece here, and then we have our third piece of angle right here. That's our clamp to hold our metal in place. I just used some uh, hinges that I had kicking around. They're uh, questionable whether they'll be strong enough or not in the long run, but they work good for now. And then I just had a piece of uh, two inch EMT that I welded onto it to uh, make up the leg. And then on the other side, I have uh, two pieces of rod coming down to it on another hinge here. And we'll get back, we'll get to that in a few minutes when I show you how it stows away. But uh, that's where all the magic happens. And then, as you can see, it's uh, quite stable when you push on it. And then, I also have these pulleys here going up to there. And we'll get to those in a little bit too. This could be made in a shorter size. And it could also be designed to... Uh, work just on mounting in a uh, vise if you had a shorter one like 12 inches or 2 foot or something or you could clamp the back piece or stationary piece to your workbench on both ends and use it that way too I never know if I'm going to be bending something really long and I want to have the extra room and it also doesn't interfere with my hoist or anything right here either which is one of the reasons I picked this spot but I was afraid if I put it just on the workbench when I needed it if I had something that was deeper than the workbench depth, it was going to be a bit of a pain. So I wanted something that gave me unlimited uh, amount of space. So we'll bend up a little piece. And I also wanted to uh, use as little stuff as possible as far as uh, making stuff up in that. So for my handle, I just have my pipe wrench. I slip it on there and that gives me a really good handle when I need it and then uh, when I'm not using it I don't have this extra piece of metal sticking out when I'm trying to stow it away so I thought that worked uh, really well and so far when I've used it I've liked it I just have a scrap piece of steel here that will bend up just to show so we're just putting that on there and then we'll uh, cinch it in place Alright, so we got both ends clamped down. If you ever had any trouble with anything sliding, you could always throw a seat clamp on the other side closer. So then I just grab this and I make a rough 90 degree bend. So I'm just going to eyeball it. Right there is about 90 degrees. And now I'm going to pull it out.
All right, there's the uh, piece that I just bent up. Turned out really good. It has a nice angle here. It's not overly sharp. So my plan is to be able to do rucker panels and everything with that because I have a project I'm working on right now that I need to bend up rucker panels for in the near future. So that's why I want such a big one for future plans with that. So now we're going to get into a little more of the construction of it. So when I did the hinges, I'll insert a pitch. But I had uh, ground down the angle. You can kind of somewhat see it there. But I had ground it down so this part would uh, fit in so it would sit nice and flat. And also when I welded them on, I bolted right here on both sides with it level to uh, get everything uh, nice and flush and uh, flat. And then I, I welded them. I could have bolted them too. I decided to weld just because I thought it'd be a little bit stronger. And then when I put my top clamp piece on, I, uh, I clamped that in place when I did it. And then I drilled through both pieces of material at the same time. This way it would, uh, be right where I wanted it and I have a tiny little uh, gap on the back side about a eighth inch roughly and that gap is to uh, have every, the bend where I want it when I come up I want it nice and tight like so and there's about a sixteenth or so of a gap about the, about the thickness of body metal for the most part and that's the uh, same on both sides. So same thing over there, as far as the uh, hinge goes. These uh, rods here, I welded on the back side, right there, like so. And then uh, I weld them onto the hinge here too. And then I use leg bolts into the wall. And I used the two by four going across just to uh, give room for my hinge on the back side. So part of the reason I picked the height that I picked, I already had these rods kicking around and I, I needed it above the uh, height of the switch. I didn't want it to interfere with the switch. But it's uh, for me, it's a nice height. It's uh, about, about the height of my belly button. So that's a nice height to work. I'm not bent way over. And then I ended up drilling a hole and I put a pulley down here. And then the other side of the pulley is attached up to a uh, big eye bolt up on the wall and then there's another pulley attached to that which comes down to uh, this eye bolt here and then I have like a uh, thing for tying down a boat so I can cinch it up so with this uh, break I'm actually able to go over 90 degrees so I can bend all kinds of stuff with it, which is really nice. So if you had any have any questions on how I constructed it, just uh, send me a comment and I'll uh, try to explain the best I can. So now I'm going to show how it takes up zero space and it uses the pulleys and it hinges and it goes up. All right, so now all I have to do, I just have to uh, and it will just uh, pull itself right up with minimal effort and then I usually keep a little bit of tension on this eye bolt here just so it doesn't accidentally free fall And since I have that TV right there, I just flip this over and then I just push it off to the side like so. And I come up to here. And now I have that, so 
so it can't go anywhere. And then I grab my ladder so I can reach. And I have a safety loop on here. So I have another eye hook in the wall. The reason I need a ladder to do I want it high enough up that it has a little more strength and it sees less forces. So now, even if that other rope comes untied or breaks, it can't come all the way over or all the way out. It's restricted there. So it's nice and tight and snug. And then I know I have a lot of weight pulling down on this hinge, probably where that hinge is rated for. So I made a, a little rod. And I just put it on the back side and have a piece of angle on the wall. And then I just take some of the load off. And then that's set. And then all I have to do, I just coil up my excess rope. This is a 50 foot chunk of rope. And it's rated for uh, about 270 pounds. So we're good with that. So now it takes up no space at all. There's nothing on the floor or anything. It just goes straight up like so. It does stick off from the wall a little bit. So that'd be about 12 to 16 inches, roughly. I just have this just on so it can't uh, pull out either way. And I just made that little bracket there. And I bent it up so it can't slide out. And then I did a uh, ugly little weld there just so it can't slide off on the edge right there. And again, I had three leg bolts in the bottom. And then to uh, take it back down, it's the same thing, but in reverse. So we can either pull this guy out or our safety loop out first. And I'm going to pull this guy out. So that's out of the way. Before I pull the safety loop, always make sure that you have your, uh, your other thing still tight. And I got my ladder. And now I'm ready to come down. Pull the ladder out of the way. Make sure that there's no uh, nobody in the way and there's nothing that if something does happen that you're worried about breaking. So I just kind of leave it in that part because it gives a little more resistance and I just start loosening off my hand a little bit. And it's a uh, very little uh, effort to hold it. I'm barely uh, clamp clamping my hands on it. I can stop it at any time. I'm just gonna come down nice and slow and control. And now we are ready to use it. I just put that out of the way. Grab my uh, pipe gun. And I'm good to go. And like I said, it's nice and solid. So I think it's going to be a good piece of equipment. So there's one thing that I like to do when I have more time to this. And uh, that is running a piece of metal all the way across here and the back side and even the top side just to make them even more rigid. But uh, I did bend a piece of uh, eighth inch material with it. It was just a small piece, just like an inch and a half long or whatever that I bent, just to try it out and see if it would work or not. And it did, but if I wanted to bend anything 
fairly long with that. I think I, I definitely want a little extra bracing in here. So I put a piece right across here like this and that will make it a lot stiffer. So that'll be in the future, but the way it is right now, it'll bend body metal and that kind of stuff, no problem. And I'm really looking forward to using it. And it takes up no space when it's not being used, which is really nice. Thanks for watching. I hope this uh, helps you out if you want to build a brake of your own, whether it goes up to zero uh, clearance or making a smaller version for a vise, it'll all be the uh, same thing. If you have any questions, just uh, send a comment. I'll respond back as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button and check me out on Instagram at Clara Garage. Have a great night.